trips. I'm gonna get him. Gonna I get think him. we dated the same girl. Hello, people. I'm here. It's been a couple weeks. I'm. This is Natalie from Creative Makers. Thank you so much for being here. And today, I'm. I'm just figuring out how much, how many people we know in common. Oh, we know uh, a ton Without of knowing each other. Right. This is Jaime Gutierrez, and we're talking him today be, to him today because he is a collector, not an artist per se. Hey, Chris. Thanks for jumping on. Hello, second person, whoever you are. Hey, Chris. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking today to Jaime because he is a collector. And although he is not an artist, I want to know what he's after and and what kind of stuff, you know, what he's looking for. And, and I can tell you just from walking around, I'm at his office right now, and just seeing how much art he has in his office, it is, it, it, it's enough to fill, I don't know, three people, four people, five people's homes. It's just, and not, and not in an insignificant way. I mean, it's in a significant way, like art on every wall, multiple pieces. It's just, anyway, so, um, okay. Thank you. You're I welcome. take that as a compliment. It, it's an incredible <laughs> compliment. All right, so I'm gonna ask you what I ask everybody and then we're just gonna kind of go from there. Great. So when you were a kid, yes, I, I would imagine that you were, I mean, every kid is creative. Yes. What did it look like for you? Growing up, my father was a fine artist. Oh, um, really? Yeah, he painted oils. Oh. And he, it was, uh, he copied the classics. So a lot of the classics he would um, read, you know, do duplicates of. So he would take us to LACMA and MOLA, no, I'm sorry, MOCA, and other exhibits and other artists' house to look at their work and, you know, kind of give us an education on art. But we would see him painting at home. And I was always intrigued with painting and art. And then, of course, when we would come to East L.A., because we lived out in the country for a little bit, we would go do mural tours, like oh. go and check out the murals. Yeah, that's and, a lot. And just, you know, and once in a while we'd catch the artists there working on it, so we were able to ask questions. So art's always been a part of my life in my childhood. And as I was growing up, um, going to college and university, I always had posters of great imagery that was associated with the movement or the culture, and um, and then when I became an attorney, I had the ability to buy art. And the, the good news is that a lot of these artists are my friends because I used to write and direct plays at the Aslan Cultural Arts Foundation, which was run by Leo Limon. And so Leo Limon would bring Magoo and Gronk and a bunch of other great artists, and he would introduce us to them. And um, so I became friends with them. And over time, when I became an attorney, I was like, hey, I'd like to buy some of your pieces. And, so I would go to their studio and, and pick up pieces, whether, whether it be, first I was collecting um, posters, or I'm sorry, uh, giclés, numbered giclés, but eventually I started getting originals, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. So, I mean, your dad is an artist when you're a kid. Yes. Did, that didn't inspire you to like create your own stuff? So, yes. Or that, focus that's in That's a good way? question, yeah. Uh, he would put us in art classes. So we would learn to draw and paint and mix colors and do a palette. Um, and so, and he would always have pencils and paper around. And when he was painting, he goes, here, you know, uh, create, do stuff. And he would encourage us to go in the direction we wanted to and instead of following a pattern, you know. But it just wasn't your, it wasn't your thing. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, some people, they get that when they're a kid and they're like, I know that this is for me and this is what I want to do for right. the rest of my life. But it didn't It didn't do that for you. It was just no. a small piece. No, it was a small piece. I, I went more into writing like poetry and plays and politic and pros and cons. The writing was my creative outlet. Which, yeah. which lends to you being a lawyer, I mean, a lot, because you yeah. have to do a lot of thinking in that way. Yes. You know? I've, I've mastered the art of bullshitting, so it does help. That's what our, that's what lawyers do. Congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. And it helped that I was doing already delving into creative writing in the past. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's all good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, so you figured out. I mean, that being creative and having art in your house was all part of who you grew up. Yes. How you grew up. I was I was raised by an eccentric, artistic, intellectual Chicano, and a militant, uh, union organizing mother. Wow, what yeah, a combination. Yeah, progressive leftist mother, you know, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That is really interesting. Yes. 
It was. It was I'm, tr I'm trying to like form that up in my head and that equals law. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think what I've done is I've parlayed my desire for justice because I have what I would call a profound sense of, of uh, righteous indignation. I coupled that with my love for art and, per and expression. And I, you know, I was in the movement. So what you have to understand is that my family is one of the founding families of the United Farm Workers. Oh, wait, and so yeah. when I didn't finish high school, I went and joined the farm worker movement for two wow. years. And so I was in the organizing division and um, everything came down to, to the courts. You know, it eventually ended up in the courtroom. And I went and saw some of the arguments and I saw the folks doing the arguments and I could do that. I could probably do it better. You know, I don't know what I was thinking was like, say this, say that. And then I eventually, after college, I joined the Brown Berets and during law school, I joined the American Indian Movement. But the thing is, is that um, I wanted to fight the good fight and I knew that being a lawyer would make that possible for me. Yeah, That's actually really beautiful. Yeah, I really you. like the way that it got put together. And I can see how you're influenced by both your mother and your father on that yes, level. Yes, You know, yeah. none of us are just one way or the other. No, yeah. no, we're not, yeah. I'm a hybrid of those two people, yeah. Okay, so you started collecting art because you loved it. Yes, I love it. I love art. I love art. And what I have to be, in all fairness, I... I'm dedicated to collecting Chicano art, right? So art made by Mexican Americans throughout the country. Um, but most, most of my collection is Los Angeles. That said, I bought um, my fiance, a Dali from the um, Dali Foundation, the family. Mm -hmm. I bought one of her favorite artists is Dali. And I brought my, bought my daughter a Chagall from the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, so she has that. Um, so, and, and then of course, what was that other artist that we bought? The guy that was lighting, Kincaid. I bought her, I oh, bought Kincaid. my fiance at King Cage. She Bringer loves Kincaid. of light. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's, it's one of her favorite artists. And my fiance is a professor of art at Mount San Antonio college. She teaches drawing and paint and watercolor, but she also does acrylic. Yeah. Another interview to come by the way, yeah. people, um, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay. So. Now, you love art. Tell yeah. me how you pick your pieces, because, I mean, there's so many artists to, to pick from. I mean, and just from seeing your art, I can see that there's both famous and well-established artists, yes. as well as people that are probably up and coming or very yes. unknown. Yes. So how, how do you, how do the pieces call to you? I mean, especially when an artist, if they have like, you know, a hundred pieces for you to look at and you're, how do you even pick one? I, I, so it's two things. And this is something I learned organizing a film festival for two years. It's content and, and, um, uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. So the content has to be profound to me, you know, but the presentation I like, I like bold colors. I like people who take chances and they work. I like, I like to see them expressing themselves. Um, I consider artists as our present day shamans because they delve into their subconscious or the universe to bring out these beautiful images that have a psychological, a profound psychological effect on us. And so um, that's what I look for. I like, pro, it, it needs to be profound to me. It doesn't right. have to be to the world. So it's, it's color, it's content. It's, it's stylization, um, it's imagery, it's texture, it's all of those things, you know. I, and when I look at a piece, I have no expectations other than being blown away or falling in love. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that. Um, it, I, I take it, I mean, maybe you're looking at it this way also, but just not saying it, but not looking at it as a cash cow for yeah. later on you know what i mean that you're looking at and going well this is a nice piece and i would imagine that when this person passes it'll be worth a you know worth a million dollars or whatever yeah. the number is and, yeah. and i'm going to just cash in right now right so that's that's the thing i i'm collecting to eventually give to a museum or to yeah to a public museum mm -hmm. so all my pieces are going to go to a public museum, most of them, you know. That is, unless you have your own public museum. Yeah, that that would be great if we were to open a museum for the community where we can have art classes and uh, different programming, you know, theater programs there. 
I would love that in the community. That's my dream. That's our dream, you know, my fiance and I's dream too. I'm so moved by the fact that you're not an artist and that yet you want to see this like just move forward. Yes. I well, because I was how the art affected me. Even when I was with the farm workers movement, um, La, uh, Carlos Almaraz used to live there before I moved there, and he did a ton of work there. And so it was, it was omnipresent, especially the imagery. But I, art is such an integral, important part of our society. It's everywhere. And the, for me, the important thing is that we get the art that's liberating, right? That empowers people, yeah. that gives people voice and strength, that you know, pulls us out of the doldrums of our individual uh, issues and then our, our collective experience in society, you know, liberating. Um, so I think Yasmin mentioned to me, and maybe I'm not remembering this cor correctly, so if I, I'm not remembering this correctly, let me know. But she, she was saying that you might have the second largest collection of Chicano <laughs> art. Well, think, at, at, yeah. at, with Ch uh, Chich Marin maybe being, being the first. Yeah, yeah. Well, Cheech, there's there's like th three people that might be first. I mean, they're always in the running. It's Cheech. What's that, Doctor Gill? Like Armando Duron. Armando Duron. George. Um, George uh, there's some people with a lot of collection, but I would say I'm like number five or six. <laughs> yeah, on that list, you know. There's and there's other people that keep their quiet. I know there's this guy in Whittier that's he lives like surrounded by the most beautiful art but he's only had pathways to his bed in the restroom in his kitchen oh he's and, and he, he's even uh it's rumored to say that he's got art in his oven you know he doesn't <laughs> use so he that's a place to store yeah and i remember one time he had some issues with his landlord and he came to me and said hey you know in exchange i'll give you a piece and of course i helped him and i never got the piece but here's the thing it saved it's it the the space is there with all that art so i see it as saving the arts right, you know? right yeah right. yeah i was like keep your peace bro as long as the art is safe you know yeah no it was your good deed yeah good deed for an artist or right. a collector yes yeah. yeah all right let me see i see that there's some questions and i didn't bring my ipad so i have to move here all right so let's see what's going on all right, Chris is watching. Margaret Garcia Margaret, is watching. Hey, Margaret. Clifton Crockett in Detroit is watching. Clifton. Margaret says, hey. Hey. And Dar is watching. Margaret, when are you inviting us over for a barbecue? <laughs> Joe Alvarez is watching. Hey, Joey. George, What's up, Joey? Georgia Garside, do you know her too? She's part of the circle. Oh, nice. Aaron Campbell. Hi, hi, Aaron. Natalie. That's Joe's wife. She's okay. a sweetheart. So Clifton says, what kind of law do you practice? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. So I'm known um, throughout the state as civil rights, police brutality, oh. immigration brutality. I'm also known among the activists to do pro bono uh, criminal defense if they get busted on the picket line, that's my policy. I'll defend them pro bono. Wow. But I also do family, some probate, some immigration, um, workers' comp. Uh, what else? Uh, personal injury, like accidents. Yeah. You do everything. No, well, there's 250 areas of law. I do what I would consider the five or six most popular. And when I mean popular, what the people need. Yeah, but there's 250 areas of law. I feel like the, the things that you've picked completely match you, though. Oh, thank you. You know what I mean? Yes. You, it's not, ra you didn't, you're not doing random. No, I'm doing what stuff I'm compassionate, yeah. I'm passionate about. Yeah, that's so smart. Yeah, it's life too short not to do what you're passionate about. Exactly. What's up, Joe? Okay, so. I, I have a going joke. Um, I need to get counseling because I love Joe Alvarez's work. <laughs> <laughs> Uptown Whittier's in the house. Yeah, my office used to be in Uptown Whittier, and um, Joe and his wife lived in Uptown. And oh, they right. Would, yeah, and so they would do art. That's how I met him on the art walk in Whittier. And he said he was moving to Joshua Tree, so I put him in contact with Rolo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with Rolo and then uh, some other people, the guy that does the box with the mirrors in them. But anyways, he that relationship blew up into... Joe being a part of Rolo's family, you know, they're very close now. And I'm really happy about that because they're both very sweet and kind people. Erin is a sweetheart. I mean, I she's an angel. She puts up with Joe. 
you know, and but she's always been loving and caring to everybody. And so we, and plus she's an artist in her own right too. I collect Joe's work, but we also collect Aaron's work, which are her, her clothing, her bags, yeah, her aprons. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yes, they are. And, and Joe's, Joe's bags and aprons and, yeah. and whatever he makes, you know. And they just jackets. opened a new spot. I know. In Joshua Tree. I know. Right there, yeah, which is brilliant. I'm going to be back up there in a couple of weeks. I'm going to see if I can stop by there. I want to go out. too, yeah. I want to go see the new spot. I always like to go to Joshua Tree during the uh, spring bloom. Yeah, it's now. It's now, now is the time. Now, vamonos. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right, well, here, let's pull a couple of pieces. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about them. Let's, shall we grab a couple of smaller ones? Oh, so here, them? let me grab this one. You want to grab that one? Okay. This one is a beautiful piece. Here, and it's, I'll hold it. You can talk. That is a Margaret Garcia. She calls the piece Blackie. Um, I call it El Gallo Negro, which is probably the same thing in Spanish. And she did Blackie, this in 2017. Yeah. So in my culture, in the Mexican and Chicano culture, El Gallo Negro symbolizes the fighter, you know, um, because they're a fighter. And so we, um, you know, I I like to think I'm a fighter for the people. And so this Gallo Negro fits right that into That is perfect my, for I you. Loved I loved it. I love that gonna, piece. I'm just going to bring it a little closer just so you guys can see detail. I happen to know because this is Margaret's work that this is oil on wood. Wood. She has these boxes specially made for her these these yeah. pieces and then she um dresses them and paints on them margaret is brilliant she's a close friend we love her work we love her presence we love um that she teaches she's dedicated to mentoring the up oh, and coming i mean talk about and then her husband he's a sweetheart too um he's from louisiana right, right. Yeah, he's a he's a fun guy. He's, yeah, he's yeah. a lovely man. He's our he's our token uh, southerner, but the guy is a class act, just like all southerners are. You know, most totally. southerners. All right. So this one yeah. I just got, and it is a uh, original. Oh, it's hard to sh uh, sorry you guys. Magoo. It's hard to show because of the because it's of your an ass. original. It's an original magoo, um, and uh, it's just beautiful. I, I didn't, I never thought that I would get an original by Magoo, but this one fell into my lap and I was just astounded and happy. I'm moving it close, but it's really, it's hard to see because of the glass. What do you think? What is it? Do you think it's pencil or? Well, I think it's called a future Chicana. No, but or, I mean. The oh medium. yeah. Pencil, right? Color, color pencil. Color, color pencil. pencil. Color pencil. I'm sorry that you guys can't see it better. I, I, I defer to Yasmin when I want to know the medium. <laughs> yeah, because she's so good at that. I'll put that back. And then there's a couple a little pieces. Yeah, Dawson or the art. No. All right. Is, uh, and so what, what I wanted to give a shout out to the Daw Center of the Art and Margaret. Um, recently, the community, the art communities, had a passing of... Uh, um, Raul Pizarro, who's a close friend of ours, and we've collected his work, but we used to hang out with the guy, and he's so much fun, he and he was loving and an advocate for art, and so the you know Margaret has built this beautiful altar for Pizarro out in front, and his name is on the marquee at the Fox Theater. Oh really? Yes, yes. Oh, and, and the Dog Gallery is going to host a, an exhibit of our collection, um, September October, uh, there at the Dog Gallery. That's so, so yeah, great. yeah. All right, so let's talk about these. That two. one is an artist, and he lives up in uh, Sacramento. His name is John Huerta, and just beautiful. I saw these pieces online, and I got them for a great deal with some great framing. But I just love his style, his use of colors. Um, it's just a very unique use of colors and style. He also did this piece. I don't. It's a card, but it's um. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love the contrast of the orange and the purple uh, butterfly. It's so stark. Yeah, and the and the framing by the green. And this is another one of his pieces, you know, with the hummingbird. It's like a day of the dead look. But he's just brilliant. I love his work. He's got a little shop up there in Sacramento, which I'm hoping to go and check out soon. And then there was, yeah, this I, was guy. Say, I saw that Yasmin pulled a, a Raul piece, too. Oh, yeah. This is a Raul Pizarro. It's an original. It's acrylic on wood, right? 
it's oil. It's he, oil he, on he wood. Painted, he mainly painted. He made him pale, painted, painted oil. oil, yeah. It's and, called Rinconcito del el Cielo. Yeah. What does that mean in English? A little peace in heaven. Oh. So, of course, Raul is just a brilliant artist, and he loved the bears. What was the symbolism of the bear? Oh, this was the bears for him. Um, he had a nephew that that wasn't eating and, and was difficult, and he was the only person that could feed him and take care of him. And so he started to tell him the story of bears, and he yeah. he it was like he was the big bear and his nephew was the little bear, and so he would tell these stories so that he could feed him and keep him interested. Oh. Yeah, it's very sweet. So, So we're doing that. <laughs> Here's another piece by Ruben Zavala. We picked this up at the Christmas show at Plaza de la Raza. And I know that Margaret Garcia wanted it, and so did your hubby. Um, but we were the ones that paid for it, so we got to bring it home. And I put it in kind of a pseudo shadow box. I don't think I'm doing it any justice. I might have to take it into a better frame. It looks like it needs a little yeah. smaller frame, but it's... Yeah, but any, I didn't. I wanted it in something to protect it from yeah. being smudged because... Because these are oil pastels, I yes, know. Yes, yeah, but look at the light. I could see Margaret's influence in Zavala, this piece of Zavala, by Zavala. And and of course... Oh, there he uh, is. Ruben, He's online. Hi, Ruben. Hi, Ruben. <laughs> I interviewed him a few weeks ago, too. I'm going to beat you all to the punch. So um, <laughs> what I was going to say, you can see Margaret's influence um, in this piece, but it's beautiful. I love the shadowing, the lighting, the contrast, the trees. I mean, Zavala, I commissioned him recently to do a piece, which I'm getting framed, um, but I picked up another piece that day. Um, and he, oh. At that same show. At that same show. This was just but in I, December, you guys. It wasn't yeah. very long ago. This is a commissioned. This, a, this is a commissioned Ruben, Ruben Zavala. Yeah, so we saw a piece like this at his show, and I go, I want one like that, but with a hummingbird. And so he did it. He did it for us. And again, yeah. there's glass over this, so it's a little hard to read. But this is all oil pastel. Yeah, beautiful. Just beautiful. Uh, I recently commissioned him to do one of a Joshua tree which is gorgeous, and that's being framed as we speak. I'm getting that professionally framed. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, Ruben, we see you there. So this one is, of course, David Fleury. I love his work. I've been collecting it for years, yeah. and he's a sweetheart. So is his wife, and his son is pre-med at Cal State LA, and his daughter's, you know, they're a good family. Um, but anyways, uh, it's the David Fleury is a sweetheart and a friend, and I just love his work, and it talks to me. It talks to me. How many, how many two of those two? We're, we're basically we're taking a tour of, of a small piece of Jaime's collection. Yeah. And this one, this one here is done by Nuke, here, by, by um, Jose Montalvo. Uh, he's, very, he's a graph artist. He's been, he's been part of like the art scene in L.A., the graffiti, he was part of a graffiti group called UTI, but he does a lot of beautiful work. And I think we're going to have him do an installation at the big exhibit in September, October. Um, but he, he's just... Jasmine, do you think this is acrylic? That one's acrylic, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And spray paint. Yeah. You might want to... I see that the... Um, the canvas yes. is a little warped. Maybe if you sprayed the back, it would come back oh, for you. Oh, thank you, thank you. And this is another nuke. Um, I love this one. Yeah, this I love one, the colors on this one. I'm gonna. This one to is a. This a one bit. is a homage to um, uh, uh, the brown buffalo, Oscar Seta Acosta, who was the lawyer for the Chicano movement, who was disappeared in 1973, and you know, it's a lot of skept, you know, just kind of what happened to him, but. This is a beautiful piece. He's the other guy in um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, uh, Hunter S. Thompson's lawyer. But it's a beautiful yeah, piece. Wait a minute, I just want to get it a little closer so that you can see the details. So there's the buffalo and the image. I love the colors underneath this image. Was Okay, Yasmin, I'm going to ask you, was this a painting or was this a print? It's a painting. It's a painting? It yes. almost looks like a print, it right? It almost looks like a print. It, it almost looks like it's a screen print or a pole or something. And it also has puffy paint, which is very yeah. interesting. <laughs> and the great thing about Nuke is that um, he's put in paint in there that you can hit with the black light and it pops. Oh, yeah. So all of his pieces so recently these... have black light effects. 
um, which are just profound. He also did that piece too. Yeah, but I love his work. I think he's very innovative. He's brilliant. Um, you want to show this one? Sure. That's Nuke. Look at that sky and the imagery. Um, he's just, he's a magical man. He's done some beautiful work. Um, I think he needs to be more collected. I think, you know, he's doing some big projects now, but he, he is somebody that's been on the scene, but he's just, every piece I, I look at, I'm just fascinated by. And I love his, um, his storylines in them. The Multi themes. Multimedia? Uh, marker, uh, acrylic. acrylic. Acrylic marker. Yeah. Here, I'm just gonna, oh, he spray paint, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does a lot of spray paint. He's a graph artist. I'm just getting it in there so that you guys can see the detail. So as you guys can see in looking at this work, I mean, it is not one subject matter. It is not one color scheme necessarily. It's not one style. I mean, the only thing that they really have in common is that they're Chicano artists for the most part. Yes. That's that's the basis of the collection. Who is, who is that? Oh. From Tejas? Oh, yeah. This guy is, I just started collecting him. His name is Ricardo Ruiz, and he's from Texas. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's from Corpus Christi, Texas, and I love his work. These are these are uh, prints. These aren't originals, but I just love his style, you know. And there was a piece here. Where did I put it? There it is. Can you grab that for me? It's like a lyrical journey, you know. It's like a Chicana Alice in Wonderland mm -hmm. you know, piece that just blows me away, you know. Look at that. Look at that piece. Look at that. The reflection is yeah, destroyed. Sorry but, for but, the reflection, guys. But yeah, if you if you put it closer, you could see her holding a snake, and you see this crowned guy like strung to the tree, and you see a man on fire walking, and she's surrounded by dogs, and they're all friendly to her. They're just kind of observing her. Um I but, I just yeah. saw that um, Anthony Villarreal popped in. Do you have any of his work? Anthony the, Villarreal, the, ta that... the tape artist. The tape he was at the he was at the show as well. You're gonna you guys will have to check him out. Yeah, he's somebody worth collecting as well. Anthony, he's, right he's gonna touch with me. I'd love to see your work. <laughs> I think you're good. Yolanda. Ooh, Yolanda Gonzalez. That's that's a portrait of my daughter by Yolanda Gonzalez. She is, of course, renowned, and she does a lot of beautiful work. I, lo I love this portrait. I love that it's a little quirky. Yeah. Yes. It's really fun. It That's captures, her. It, it captures, captures her. My daughter, yes. Oh, really? Yes, it captures it. And, and Yolanda has a retrospective happening right now at MOLA, Museum and of Latin American Art. So, uh, just the colors in this, you guys. And I mean, speaking of... And speaking of Cedic, Cedic painted these. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Just, these are too fun to not mm -hmm. show details on. Yeah. Because I, I just want to say something to you artists that are looking for perfection. Mm -hmm. Look at, not, not perfect. Not perfectly straight lines to represent those, those stripes. Not perfect in any way, shape, or form, but totally effective. Yes. Really beautiful. We love it. And so this is my daughter, Setic. Oh. This is her work, or their work. They go, by, they, go by they and them. So this is their work, which I'm very intrigued. So Sedek, of course, grew up around art. Of course. And always had um, art stuff available to her, to them. And so they um, did these when they were living with us. And I have a bunch. They're going to be part of the exhibit because I have a bunch of other pieces that I need to frame. Yeah, that, I was going to say these deserve a frame. Yeah, yeah. We should yeah. frame them soon. Um, Georgia said that Yolanda was with her when she was at Self Help Graphics. Oh, so, nice! Yeah, she was part. Of, uh, yeah. Gar Georgia was part of that whole Self Help Graphics. Georgia, Scrabble. you want to give me the Georgia two Garside. Fireside. Garside. 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 Yeah. Ooh, who's that? Another person. Well, Yolanda, I don't know if you're Chicano or have any Chicano on you, but um, she does really interesting pieces that you can see the influence. This, of course, is is uh, Carlos Ramirez. I just love his work. Yeah, Great story. Um, we interview, I interviewed him a few weeks ago, you yeah. guys. 
he was he did an exhibit in London at the um, recommendation of Banksy. Correct. So yeah. that's impressive. Yeah. But I love his work, and he's a sweetheart. And I love his studio, and his wife Jeanette is just the sweetest. And I want to give her a medal for putting up with him. <laughs> and and so here we go. So I mean, I want to talk to you guys too about the importance of knowing your collectors and how important it is to make friends in the community you know because this is where everything no. gets seen these are frank romero's frank right? romero's frank yeah. romero these are two pieces i picked up from his studio in vernon want to encourage people to go out there and pick up some pieces themselves um yes so um for me collecting art is very personal um, in that I interact directly with the artists, I conversate with them, I'm their friends. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people, I think, that when you're an artist, you start to think that you're in it all by yourself, mm. and that you just put it out there, and you just hope and pray that somebody buys your work, you know, and you forget about the importance of, like, I talk about this all the time, having a story. What is your story? Right. Because people want to know what your story yeah, is, right? As a collector, is this yes. important to you? It makes it more interesting. Of course. Gives it a backstory, gives it depth. Right. And volume, yeah. Yeah, and then just, I mean, making friends. I mean, there's a whole community of artists out there, and we're all related. Yes. And just, you know, you and I have been talking, and I'm like, yes, I know them. Yes, I've interviewed <laughs> them. You know, you know them. Of yeah, course, yeah, I went to school course. with them. And, you know, right. it's just a funny little thing that happens, and that it's so important in the art community and for building, if you want to do, you know, if you want to be more influential with your work and if you want to sell your work and, and your work means something to you in this way, it's important to get out there and talk to people. You can't just do it from your studio and hope that it's going to get done without anything else. Right. And and I want to encourage you to do that because the art community, for the most part, is very compassionate, loving, empathetic. Everybody's been through starting out. Um, there's a bunch of artists that have gotten hip to making prints and numbering them, which I want to encourage you to do. Uh, pricing your prints and your originals appropriately. Uh, also, creating a, a, a Instagram or a Facebook where you, your art is, where people can go and inquire about it, purchasing it and buying it, and go to the shows, go to the Christmas show, go. There's all these art walks, and they, I, I don't know how much they charge, and some places don't even charge to set up a table and be out there, and that's how you meet other artists and other and collectors like myself. Just so you know, we're talking to a community of people that is national here, so they're all the way nice. from Canada, all the way all over the United States. Great. So this is just not Californians that we're talking to, just right. so you know. Right. Um, so, I mean, but every community has a place yes. for artists. Yeah, everywhere, I'm sure. And even, you know, I, I was just complaining to my friends, commiserating over the fact that in, like, Canada and in parts of Europe and in other cities, there's a lot of support for the arts and the artists. Um, it, uh, materially, uh, economically, grants, all kinds of stuff. And I just wish Los Angeles would be more. I know that the big, you know, museums and the big theater troops get their nice chunk of funding, but we need to, you know, and here's the thing is that a majority of that money is going towards white art. And, and we're in a city, in a county that's predominantly Chicano, like almost 50%. There needs to be more funding for that art. And art is important because it's therapeutic, because it's liberating, because it helps us do the introspection and, and come to conclusions within ourselves instead of internalizing the day-to-day the -day crap that humans do to themselves. And that's why art is important. Yeah. I think is in a general sort of way, too, artists tend to be more sensitive. And, and so if you're more sensitive, um, things on the outside affect you more. And holding on to that yeah. is worse for a person that's more sensitive than somebody that's desensitized or sensitized. Right. right. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. All right. I see some things happening. Let's see what we got. I wanted to share the, my <laughs> logo. This is the logo created by Yasmin oh. Cardona, my fiance who's also my office manager and the queen of my world. Um, <laughs> but she did that image for my card. Everybody loves it. I love it's it. It's actually yeah. wonderful. It yeah, is yeah, so yeah. wonderful. 
pick the colors. It's just, it's, I love This is a wonderful piece of artwork all by itself, Yasmin. Person. She's uh, brought a lot oh, of beauty into my life. So beautiful. All right. So Georgia says she's not Chicano, but definitely influenced. And I would say okay, looking at cool. seeing her work is totally, you would, you would really like it actually. Yeah. Uh, Anthony says, thank you for plugging me. Uh, Anthony says, wonderful to connect with a new collector. What I, I was going to go back to this Clifton, very good, um, thought about the pricing thing. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, that's something to remember being, you know, socializing. That's Georgia. Yeah, the network. See, that's yeah. it. The network. And here's the thing. You'll, you'll find people, you'll find friends. Yeah. You know, people that you click with, that you jive with, like for instance, her husband. We saw him at the Christmas show, and then we see him at a party of artists in Joshua Tree. We were performing that and, night. Did you see Yes, yeah. I saw that. And and both times, nicest guy in the world, and somebody I'd love to hang out with, you know, at some point. He's a good hang. Um, but but <laughs> just the conversation I had when was very insightful, and, and I learned a lot from the conversation, and I shared things I knew. So you'll find people like-minded, right? Um, fellow travelers in the art world, in the art scene. And that's a beautiful community. Yeah. I just love that community. Yeah. I want to go back to what you were saying about pricing, because this is something all artists struggle with about like appropriately pricing your work. And so, I mean, there's lots of different schools. You don't want to underprice your work and give it away for nothing. But by right. the same token, you don't want to overprice your work and right. then just like exclude anybody that would want to have it to right. have it. Right. So, I mean, as a collector, I mean, I'm sure that you see all different price points. Right. Talk right. to me about your ideas or your thoughts about so, this. So, so I have to I have to quantify that. I'm a Chicano collector. Yes. In that um, you know, I can't afford the blue chips, right? Um, and I I can afford a certain economic range. Well, you're getting the and, blue chip Chicano artists. Yeah, for well, sure. for steel, for a steel because it was through some type of, um, I don't want to call it a raffle or anything, but that's that's an original Magoom, and I got original Margaret's. Um, but but the thing is, is uh, you have to talk to the artists and find out what's what's their comfortable pricing, and you know pay what you pay what you can, what you know you can. In my experience, um, uh, and I want to encourage the artists to, if you do gicles, number them and sign them. I, I, we went and we, there's this beautiful young Chicana artist that we went and bought a couple pieces from at the, um, at the exhibit. She's, is that her too? No. no. She's brilliant. And this is a Jacle, but there, it's not numbered and it's not, and well, she signed it, but for, as a collector, I like the numbering, the something, I guess it adds to its value. I always talk to artists too about when they do gicles, even if they do a few strokes of paint over yeah. over them, to make them more original, you know, yeah. so that what not everybody's mean? getting the same thing. She's a brilliant artist, and I just we love her work. We got two pieces from her, but um, so I I talk to the artists. Um, I usually say, look, if I buy more than one piece, can I get a good price? You know, mm -hmm. I like to go in and get a bunch of pieces. Mm -hmm. And and um, and they're real sweethearts. And then once in a while, like John Baladez and and Miguel Pichardo, they'll, they'll throw in a little extra, you know. A little something. Yeah, man. Yes. That what's my palate? It keeps coming me. It keeps having me come back. Um, you know. And there's times where they're saying, "I want this much for for this piece," and it's just way out of my range. And I was like, "Well, I love it," but. And then there's other artists that do a layaway plan. Right? Oh, right. So you pay them a little, and then you eventually, you're sending them the money, and eventually you pay it, and you get the piece. Right. Right? Or some that trust you, you can hold on to the piece, but you make the payment. That's your contract. Right. Um, oh, wow. And I just collected this piece. I love that. I love that every time we start talking about something, how many things about something else that we yeah, should be showing? This one is a Zarco. He's out of Arizona by Phoenix, and I just love this piece. It's a mask. And it's a wood piece. It's a wood. Yeah, yeah look at that. It's, really it's all beautiful. wood. One solid piece of wood. And he's a genius. Uh, the guy has a bunch of um, masks at his piece. And he, you know, he was saying, somebody was saying that he looked like this. This looked like me. And, a little that, bit. And Zarko, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bit. I could see that, yeah. you know. See? So yeah. Tell him the story behind it, too. What is the story behind it? He sent it to you for your opening. Oh, Yeah. So Zarco, 
uh, a real smart guy, Zarko, sent me that piece as part of my office opening. And then he goes, hey, see if somebody out there wants to buy it. And I put the word out there and stuff, but I got attached to it, so I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the game oh, plan but oh, all the time. <laughs> here's, here's a better one, and you know who you are. Like, you know, these artists come to me and say, hey, I can do a portrait of you. And I'm thinking they're going to do it for free. I go, oh, I'm flattered. Yeah, sure. And then they'll follow it. I go, I'd love that. And then they follow it up with, oh, but I'll give you a great price. <laughs> so they already hooked me. They already hooked me. And I was like, okay, I'll, you know. Mental note to self. Try this, try this, yeah. this out. This but never, tactic. never once did I regret doing that. No, I just was flattered. I was, I thought it was funny. <laughs> And of course, I, I have the piece. My my entire living room are portraits of myself. Oh, really? From different artists. Oh, how yeah. fun! Yeah, that yeah, must yeah. be so fun. Except for that one. That one I brought here. Yeah. Have you? Have you? Can I pull that one down? Please? You're gonna pull it? Okay, yeah. great. There's a piece. There's an artist by the name of Ricardo Estrada. He's an artist. Um, he lives in Whittier, but he has a bunch of murals at Plaza de la Raza, and. Um, Yasmin, thank you for he, being our runner. Yes. Yeah, thank you. He did that piece of me, which I love. I want to do, I want to do some okay. gicles of it, and then sell sell them uh, at the um, at the big exhibit. But it's called the Resurrection of Huitzilopochtli. Now, Huitzilopochtli is the Aztec god of war and art. Oh, war so, and art. And art. And it's interesting that they're synonymous with each other. Um, but it's the, yeah, that's, that's our, that's my boy. That's, he's a brilliant artist. I love his work. I mean, the detail. Oh, yeah. No, the, the color. Guy, the guy's a genius. Ricardo Estrada. It's really beautiful. A acrylic? Acrylic. Yeah, acrylic. What, what is Margaret saying? That's why they're more expensive? Uh, but, <laughs> that's why they're more expensive. Wait a minute. She said something else, too. Let me see. I'm going. I'm going back here a little bit. There, it's. You pass it. Uh, hold on. Wait a minute. There's okay. other things I want to just get to. Uh, uh, if I get in trouble in LA, he's the guy I'll call for sure. Yeah. Right you. Right that's on. Clifton. Could he open a Detroit office? Uh, oh. Margaret says Giclees can be printed on demand. Numbered editions means you have a set number you have to stick to. Plus, also, uh, master's proof and artist proof. Numbering limits the ability to reprint. Just and that's why they're more expensive, maybe because right. she approaches right, and that's why I, I wanted to encourage that Chicana artist to number and sign her pieces, well, number them, um, so that she could ask more for them, you know, right? And, well, and I want could. to encourage that, and then make posters, you know, that you could give to you could sell for 20 30 bucks to the college students, right? So they could adorn their walls and wet their palette. Right. So that when they become professionals, they're out there buying your work. Yeah, when yeah. they have more money. Uh, he can have a gicle of any piece for of mine for free. This is Clifton in Detroit, as long oh. as he mentions my name from time to time. <laughs> All right. Hey, Clifton. <laughs> send one. I'll have to see your work, man. I love art. We want to go to Chicago to go see the Mexican Museum, as well as the uh, Picasso collection at the um, Chicago Conservancy. They have the largest collection of Picasso's originals. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the university. So Julie Jules says, are you going to give Ricardo Estrada a cut for selling his work? Well, that's a good question. I have to talk to uh, Estrada. So I, my hope is that he'll agree that half of the proceeds of the sale will go to the Dog Gallery to provide um, community uh, free art classes and, and materials to the community. And then he would he would take half the profit after my investment has been reimbursed, of course, you know. Um, but I want that to be part of the collection, of course. Yes, the answer is yes. With that caveat, my hopes is that uh, Ricardo um, and I have I have to get his permission for this uh, that he would he would half the proceeds would go to uh, the dog gallery for the community artwork that they do. Yeah. So I mean, let's go back to pricing for just a minute. So. I, I mean, I don't even know how to ask this politely, but I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna give it a go. I mean, I people are people ask. They want to know about numbers, like right, dollar right. figures, like right. what 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 makes sense to you. What I mean, as a collector, I mean, what, ja, Yasmin, you have something to say yes. about this? Jaime, how do you price your hours of service as being an attorney? 
Oh, oh, I didn't even think about going down this road, but let's see this. So, so my hourly rate will range from three seventy-five to three hundred an hour. Okay. So, yeah. how does this affect your buying, or, or how do you see this as affecting artists? I I don't know how it it affects the artist, but I mean, for prints, for numbered prints, depending, uh, they should range from a hundred to three hundred dollars, and then for originals. 750 to thousands, you know, depending on the size depending. And, work, yeah. and, and I want to encourage artists to make posters right. and sell and sign the posters so that college students or working class folk can frame them and whatever they want to frame them and put them on the walls. I, I know people that are critical of people collecting art and they're not storing them properly and they shouldn't, they shouldn't buy art then. Well, then where does that put the artists? Right. You know, when they're trying to make a sale, they're trying to make a living off their, their passion. So I, I don't think, I think what needs to happen is that the community needs to put out um, video instruction on how to preserve art and how to hang art and how to frame it. You know, there's people critical. Well, if you're not going to frame it in a certain way, then don't frame it at all. Don't collect. No, that, no. Frame I mean, it. I feel like if the artist feels that strongly about a work being framed a particular way, then they should take it upon themselves to frame it and sell it that way. Exactly. Honestly. Yes. yes I mean, yes, don't yeah. put. I mean, don't don't sell it with with the understanding that they're going to do exactly what you tell them to do. Right. The, the buyer gets to do whatever they want with the artist. Exactly. Exactly. Another piece that I wanted to share was this one by Jaime Zacarias. I have to move. I have to move the camera back. So this. there's an artist by the name of Jaime Zacarias, also known as Germs, and he is renowned. He did um, he did a piece for there Juxtapose called, and I have it in the other room called Chingadasos y Putazos. Um, do you want to grab that? And then, um, but this piece is called Defending the Dreamers, and he gave it to me for a great price. Uh, and he made some prints from it, um, and it hangs here, and it's been in a couple press conferences that I've had here in the office. But Jaime Zacarias is a genius. He's a brilliant artist. He's collected widely. I know that, you know, the Cheech has a bunch of his pieces and uh, a bunch of other folks, but he's, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he's a dad of two beautiful boys. I've seen him at the Dog Gallery. Uh, we've hung out together. But he's a fun guy, and, and I appreciate his work. And his style. He does. These are called lucha squids. So they're squids in a lucha libre mask. And um, he's done Im other imagery, but that's his his forte. This one is a print that I bought a long time ago in Whittier at a little gallery. And it's it was the it was the cover he did for Juxtapose magazine. And it's called Chingadasos y Putazos. Yeah. So it was. Um, it was a beautiful piece. If it's you put really, it closer, you'll see. It's really detailed. detailed. And you, you'll see, um, really like detailed people fighting Nazis. You know, it's his work is always about justice and fighting racism and classism and hate. Um, but he's a brilliant artist. You know, and that brings me back to thinking about you know the themes in your own lives and how important they are. Your story. And how it comes out in your work, whether you want it to or not, yeah. you know, you're in every piece of work. Whether you're doing somebody else's portrait or not, you're there. Yes. And it makes a difference. Yes. Okay. And so I have a wish list. You have a wish list. My wish, and this comes from my socialist tendencies, right? I would love for a nonprofit to, to create an incubator for these artists to be a part of. And they teach them how to network. They help them create a, either a website or an Instagram and a, an, a, an account for them to be able to sell art and send it by mail. You know what, though? But this is, I mean, yeah, I think... And number print. Teach them the whole economics of art. I think some of that is right on the money, but I think some of it, though, too, younger artists, they've already got the Instagram thing, the oh, social yeah. media thing down. They don't, they don't need anybody's help in that realm because they're already there. This is the way they communicate. Okay. But networking, yes... You know, yes. how, how to talk about your art, yes. Right, right, you know, right. how to um, present your work in a professional manner, yes. You know, all of that stuff, absolutely, because I think that, that could really be yes. used. Yes, yes. And then you, the great thing about having the conversation is, like, they'll say, hey, there's a big sale in Culver City. They do their art walk. You should get a table there. It's 20 bucks. 
and you'll bring your pieces and I know your work will sell. Right. And that just leads, you know, I bought pieces and my friends, you know, uh, other attorneys or other people, wow, who's that artist? I would love to get a piece. And, and then we have it. Like I've hosted art events at different artist studios. And as a result, a lot of art was collected that day because I invited my friends, they love my work. And they, the, I, I was like, this is that artist that you liked. We're gonna have a big party this place. And the guy, you know, the woman or female, they walk away. They, they, they're able to get some sales out of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's a party. It's a, you know, non-threatening em, 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 environment. I usually, and at home, I used to do these things called uh, Chicano salons. Uh -huh. And so I would have poets and, um, of course, art. And I have food and drink and just the best conversations what did you do art. for free? It was just like... Oh, yeah, it was free. Party. No, no, no. Yeah, nobody got charged to come in, you know. I mean, I paid for the food and the drink, and um, and uh, I gave... I would pay for musicians to come. Not a whole band, but like right, somebody playing classical guitar mm -hmm. or Mexican guitar. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They're fun. That sounds They're great. Fun. And, you know, you invite cool people, and when... Righteous cool people come together. It's just a very positive environment, yeah. That's an idea, you yeah. know. Um, I could even see having a salon where you invite artists to come and bring five pieces of work. Yeah, Maybe that they're excited about or even and everybody gets, you know, five minutes or ten minutes in front of everybody to just talk about their work yes. and, and what they're doing. I like that idea. We did that with Carlos, Ricardo, and Miguel Pichardo. Yes. We've done that. We've done that at yeah. our house, but it was just artists. It wasn't when we didn't invite the community. And I had an opening here, but in my when I used to live in Whittier and in, in City of Terrace, I would have these salons that invite a ton of people, and exhibit uh, Miguel Pichardo, Carlos, yeah. um, Ricardo Garcia, um, and and so they would get some sales out of it, and people would familiarize themselves with their work yeah it's yeah. a it's a beautiful way to involve other artists in your own world yes you know, yes get to know them and and i want people to know that i'm their ally the i'm the artist ally yeah and their my house and my office is a safe place for them and they can come they can call me anytime i'm a lawyer so if you have any issues with contracts or and other uh, lawyers call me all the time and then if there's been times where I've given money for rent or supplies or I've sponsored a poster, you know, so I consider myself a patron in that sense. Yeah. So um, Clifton asks, what does he mean by posters? Yeah. And I would get, I would, I would assume that what we're talking about is just like easy prints of your right, work right. that aren't like, you know, uh, Pantone matched, <laughs> right, right. Um, super, super prints. You know, right, they're not right, expensive right. to make. You might even not on them. expensive paper. Yeah, not on yeah. expensive paper. Just really easy stuff that gets rolled up yes. and put into a tube and you mail it out or yeah, something. Yeah, if you ever go to those record shops yeah. where they have these posters you could look through and they sell them in the little tubes. They're not even in a tube, they're just wrapped yeah, up in plastic. Yeah, they just wrapped up with yeah. That. That made a difference in my life. Getting those posters and putting up in my room in college and in law school, having that presence of that art. And so when I, you know, became an attorney and I was able to buy number G clays and originals, you know, it just, I, I, we, I, that tone was set, well, when I was growing up, but at, as an individual in college and, and law school. It just yeah. sort of blossomed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else. Uh, printing on fine art papers is an expensive, is as expensive as printing on gallery wrapped canvas. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony, I'm glad you like my ideas. He said, I have great idea. I had a great idea. Detroit Fine Artist Breakfast Club is like that. So Clifton is in Detroit and they have like, they have a club where they meet once a week and they, all these artists appear and show their work. And there's, they, I think there's a small membership fee to be there wow. and they all get to bring a couple pieces of work and talk about them. Why are we doing that here, people? Let's do it, Raymond. <laughs> Gab Gabrielle Flame says, 26 acres by the ocean. We could do an amazing event. Sorry, just getting excited. <laughs> yeah, if you have, yeah, that sounds like an art festival with camping. Uh, sounds fun to me. Yeah. With some good food and ganja, right? <laughs> yeah. So Clifton I mean, says the breakfast, uh, the Detroit Breakfast Club is free. 
So Ooh. that's just. But that they have a big they have a big building dedicated to the arts there, and um, I think it's part of like the city acknowledging artists. And it's yeah. I, I'm imagining. It's I have an idea. I had this idea, and I proposed it to Gloria Molina, and she seems like she liked it, which was um, to have arte en el parque, art yeah. in the park. Yeah. And so, you know, Lincoln Park at Plaza de la Raza, uh, Mariachi Plaza, yeah. here here in the art district, Somewhere. throughout the county. Yeah. Like different weekends at different places where you would have just art. And outside of them, of course, you would have the craft people. And then, and that was it. Not Nothing, nothing bought in bulk from China and resold. I was just going to yeah. say, we were just, <laughs> no, 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 no. we were just at Sycamore Park last night and they were having like an event for Mexican New Year. Mexica New Year, yeah. Yeah. And we went and I was so disappointed by all the stands. It was all the same crap yeah. from one stand to another. They like, they all went to some one place and all bought their stuff. And I was just like, and I get that it's cheap and it's easy to buy, but it's cheap and it's easy to buy. Right, and right, why right. would I want it? Right. And uh, I would love to see art in the park. That would be yes, awesome. I mean, yes. other cities do it. And I've, I've been to New York, Santa Barbara, France, Germany. They all yeah. do it. Yeah. And it's the artist sitting and you have easels where they have their art propped up. Yeah. And they have a stack of chic she plays and they have some originals there and they sell directly to the public yeah. and they have their little machines so that people have cards yeah. or cash yeah. but it's a great thing to do and you have you know great food vendors and and then you have craft people there too you know yeah. what did course. Gloria say Gloria was said that was a great idea she wanted to do the incubator as well yeah but I I moved out of LA I was no longer going to the East Side it's Art she's the head of the East Side Arts Initiative yeah, and Do you know that Gloria is an incredible quilter? I heard. Yeah. I heard. And she goes to Margaret's class yeah. and paints as well. well. I, I painted with her. Yeah. yeah. She's and she's me. she's not feeling well. I know she's been oh. sick. She has stage four cancer. And so oh. we're, we're praying for her she and, know you know, that. and just uh, help uh, praying that she's comfortable, praying that she heals, praying that her family, she's just, I think she just had a grandchild. Oh, I don't you know. know. I don't know her daughter. that well. Yeah. So, but yeah, she's, a, she's like, one of the legends of the east side politics she was the first chicana or latino for that matter to be voted to the la county supervisors because it was we were being gerrymandered and so maldiff um who was run by antonia hernandez who was who's now head of the california endowment um who's a badass and her, her husband is uh, judge stern who's i'm a big fan of uh anyways she sued them so they had to break up the county into districts well they had to create a district that was predominantly latino okay. which was a huge chunk of the city um and she was the first supervisor and she was there up until recently yeah now it's um hilda solis who we love hilda's a big supporter of the arts yes. and and nonprofits like parents place that we do a lot of volunteering at you know they do a lot of good work with parents who have children with intellectual disabilities wow yeah 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 I, I thank you for sharing that about Gloria. I had no idea. I didn't know yeah, that she was going sick, through that. Yeah. She was having her own um, cancer journey. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So we prayed. No, no. But she's been a big supporter of the arts. Yeah, yeah. And even Via Regosa, he um, he gave a lot of money to Plaza de la Raza. You know, when he was Speaker of the Assembly, he made sure money was was coming in for the arts. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's funny to me that um, schools like cut out art and music programs for such a long time. I don't, I don't even know that they're back because they don't keep track of this sort of thing. But I I just it never made any sense to me and why they thought that things would be better without art and music. Right. Why they thought kids didn't need it. Right. It was greed over. Pro, uh, social programs over education. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was at Prop Thirteen. It, it's also sort of that thought that, you know, art isn't valuable mm -hmm. and that science or math or English or whatever the humanities are somehow make a bigger difference in life than art does. And I'm not sure yeah. that that's true. Yeah, that's I know what, I'm talking to the choir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when you have greedy, industrialist, super capitalists running the country. They, they devalue what is liberating. Yeah. And they they want to pour money into what makes them richer. Yeah. You know? 
And you know what? We're in a democratic society. They, they can have their fun with their capitalist trip, but we, the public, needs art and music. You know. I love that during the pandemic there was such a big focus on people. I mean, they were home all of a sudden, and and they all of a sudden were like, well, what would I really like to do? Yes. And they all took the time to learn how to bake sourdough bread and you know grow little things and yeah. and do some art and learn how to sew and all. And, I mean, just all right. these things that they never gave themselves or allowed themselves to do before. Right. Get out of dysfunctional marriages and you know <laughs> things like that. <laughs> But yes, it gave people a moment of pause. Yes. And with that pause, they, they did the introspection. They asked, what would I like to do? I have free time on my hands. Like, yeah. let's cook, let's draw, let's paint. Yeah. Let's fall in love. You know, let's, um, let's do little trips here and there. But yeah, a lot came from the pandemic, um, which I'm grateful for. And sadly, we lost a lot of people. But yeah. I think what it did was gave people a sense of urgency. Like, life is short. Why aren't you doing what you're passionate about instead of just being this machine, you know, that yeah. just wakes up, works, eats, sleeps, you know, and that instead of expressing. Yeah. Expression is such a human, important thing, you know. I know. I know. All right. I saw a, kind of, a few things here. Let's see what's going on. Um... Okay, downriver.org will even have volunteers handle my artwork at the shows, and I don't have to. This is That was Clifton talking about Is that Detroit. Margaret? Margaret says, Grand Park will now be named the Gloria Molina Park, which I just heard wow. about. That's right. Thank you. Yay. Apparently, she's now terminally ill with cancer. Oh. So, Plaza de la Raza uh, uh, of Cultura y Arte will be having an exhibit in her honor. You can visit that as well as my exhibit, Art. Para la gente. So, Beautiful. Uh, yeah. I love, I love how Margaret subtly plugs herself. Yes, exactly. Uh, Clifton Crockett says, I turned 70 this year. I'll pay 30% all day long to, to you know, having somebody do art, uh, uh, sell his art for him. Um, and, and Georgia says, I so agree with his politics. With your oh, politics. thank you. So I'm a, I'm a Chicano bohemian <laughs> with socialist tendencies skating on thin millennial ice i think when i ask people questions like i ask people questions about their life and, and they when they say oh this is so bad and i said okay is it really so bad with just a little bit of good or is it mostly good with just a little bad and you're just focusing on the right thing right. and i feel like you're you're and mostly an artist just focusing on a little bit of lawyerism yeah 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 i agree <laughs> You're not mostly a lawyer with a little bit of I art. Agree. You're mostly an artist with a little bit yeah. of art. Yeah, I would love to run a gallery, art space, um, and and do artists in residence and then do G clays for different artists and figure out ways to get their their art in the public's hands. Mm -hmm. I, I feel mean, like you could yeah. do that. Yeah. You, I mean, you know the people, you have the resources, you know, it's right. just a matter of like pulling it all together. It's probably just a matter of time, which is the hardest thing Thank sometimes you. to come by. You know what? I read, read recently or I saw something recently. We have to be, have patience with ourselves. Yes. And allow the process to occur. Yes. And, and, and just be patient. It'll happen. You know, I think yeah. patience is the biggest thing. Um, I'm, I can't be tied to the end result. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm. I'm patient and I'm enjoying the journey. That's why Chicanos ride low riders. We don't ride fast cars or big trucks. We do low and slow. Low and it's slow. The, it's the journey. Yeah. It's the beautiful journey. Look around, you know, take things in. Because it's it, world. the world is a beautiful place. And especially now that spring's happening. I want to wish everybody a beautiful spring. Go see the flowers. Go to Joshua Tree. See the contrast of the flowers. Bring your sketch pad. Bring your coloring pens. If those colors inspire you, do it express it's a beautiful thing yeah it's therapy it's therapy yeah i think i think we're getting to the end here would you have any um final words you want to tell people that are watching you i don't know anything you want to say oh thank you uh yes i want to encourage everybody to express themselves even those of us like myself who aren't artists there's a there's some way that you can express yourself do it it's very therapeutic Journal, write down your thoughts and feelings. That stuff is very important. But go to the art exhibits. Buy art. Buy art from living artists um, because they're the ones that need it. Um, and, and tell them. If you like their art, tell them. It means a lot to them when you say, 
I love your work. It's beautiful. And, and you know, I know they sell their art, and there's people that tell me, uh, collectors that say, don't barter with the artists about their art. No, you know what? If you can't afford a piece they have, you tell them, look, all I have is this, and maybe they'll go for it. You know, and if they don't, then say, you know, I'd like to do a layaway. But support the arts, buy pieces, put them up in your house and in your space. You'll see the difference. You'll feel the difference. It's all, as you know, the, the, the imagery that's on your wall. It will have a profound effect on you. And not just that, your friends. Like, I, all the colors in my office are co these colors. Like, these the vibrant, walls. beautiful colors mm -hmm. that contrast the art. I don't have any white walls or, like, these dull colors, you know. I, I need richness in my life. It's empowering and it's a beautiful thing. But I want to thank you oh. for all the work that you do, all how you're doing these interviews. I think archiving is so important, having these conversations, humanizing collectors and artists to the world. Yeah. And not just that, but those people who are watching are like, wow, I'm just like them. You know, I'm there's nothing super unique about them. They that just, is always my point. Yeah. That, that we're everybody, even the most successful artists have their doubts and their fears. Right. Just like you do if you're starting out. Right. And what I have to tell you is that make mistakes and make a lot of them because yeah. that's how you learn. <clears throat> yeah. You don't learn from a book. You don't learn from a lecture. You learn from trying and practicing. And you're going to make a bunch of mistakes. But redo. I mean, it's, you know, nothing's written in stone. So I want to encourage you. Just go for it. And like I said, community artists. And I want to encourage if any of you are interested in helping us develop art in the park or these art incubators or ways in which to empower artists or create an art community throughout the county or even the state of California, then please, you know, contact us because it needs to happen. Um, there are very few venues that are open, but there's a ton of talent out there and there's a ton of hibernating talent, people that are quiet and just kind of, I know a ton of artists that you don't even know they're artists. They won't share. Yeah. Um, like this one guy who was worked for the mayor, um, the guy's a brilliant artist. And, he, and his, he's got a bunch of his work in the house. And I was like, why don't you have a show? Your work is great. But he's like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And his work is better than most. He does the chalk art show every year in Pasadena. Oh, does And he? his pieces are him, his daughter, and his son. They're all artists. And they do a great and job. And he's just flying under the radar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing politics stuff, but quiet about his art. He's an ex-Marine, so, you know, he's, he's got to play that persona. But the guy is a brilliant artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was his name? I forgot his name. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me about oh. all of this. I mean, this is a whole different angle, and I and I love learning about it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for coming and sharing my space and the art that we have here to collect and the work you do. My pleasure. Thank you. And say hi to your hubby. I will. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you for joining us today, and next week we'll talk to somebody else. All right. Bye. <laughs>